Hello, in this video I'm going to describe uh, what I found out about this uh, steering column out of a 1993 Jeep Wrangler. Um, the symptoms were that you would turn the key, the engine would start, but when you turn the key back off, the engine would not shut off. Uh, my original assumption was it was something to do with the ignition switch, which is here. And so uh, I went and bought a new ignition switch, replaced it, put it all back in, and um, well, the, the ignition switch turned the key off, or turned the engine off with a screwdriver, but once I installed it and used this rod, the steel rod actuator that comes from the ignition key, I had the same problem. It wouldn't shut off. So um, from that point, I started taking the, uh, the uh, steering column apart up here, up here at the uh, steering wheel end, but quickly realized that I couldn't get to the guts unless I had this whole thing out. So here it is. And I uh, showed him a previous video on how to remove this entire steering column from the vehicle. Um, so at this stage I've repaired it and um, I've got it back together to a point where I can test it. And uh, so now when I turn the key, the rod moves and you can see the actuation of the switch. See how it moves there? That's start, the spring-loaded start. Let go, it springs back. That's the run position. Pull it back and then there's this little lever right here locks the steering, the, excuse me, locks the, uh, or prevents the lock cylinder from turning until you push it down, which allows you to turn it further. And as you turn it further, you can see the switch move. There's off, and then the accessories, if I keep going, pull it on back, that's accessory. So now it seems to be working. Um, when I first assembled this thing, um, I didn't buy any parts. I just put it back together, same as whoever had it before, had it apart before me and put it together wrong. Um, and I was wrong about that. So when I first reassembled it, I would turn the key backwards and the switch would hang up somewhere right in here. It wouldn't come all the way back to uh, the off position. So I knew I was going to have the same problems as before. So uh, what I did was uh, I went ahead and got into the steering column, got to this lock cylinder. And the way it works is that when you turn this key, there is a gear right about here. This key, this entire lock cylinder slides into that gear, mates with the gear. And uh, it's got a little fort, uh, what you call it, just a key mechanism so that it engages with that gear. And as you rotate the key, the gear turns, it's a pivot or it's a pinion, and it moves a rack, a metal rack, back and forth like this. It's sort of like a rack and pinion steering. So as you turn the key forward, it moves the rack out that way, which moves this rod. The rod is attached to the rack. So it moves the rod out, engages the switch, everything works. Now the problem with this one is that uh, the plastic gear that was in here, the teeth were worn down just to the point where they would kind of pull away from the rack and not engage the rack fully. So it had enough teeth going forward to start, but it didn't have enough bite on the rack to pull it back into the off position. So um, I figured that out, and uh, fortunately, I went to uh, I got on the internet and did some research, find out what's called, and found the part numbers. And Dorman actually makes a repair kit, and the part number is eight three. This is important. Dorman eight three two two one. And I just happened to find one of these repair kits at an auto parts store on the other side of town on a Sunday morning. The only one in town I could find. So I drove down there, got it, and sure enough, it's working. So. I repaired the steering column with the new plastic gear and the new rack. I could have reused the old rack, it was actually still in good shape. Because if the rack is metal, the gear is plastic. So the gear is what really wears out. So I put the new plastic gear on, and by the way, the plastic gear, it comes out, the way you take it out, you just use a screwdriver and pop it loose, and it comes out the same hole that the lock cylinder was in. And uh, by the way, to get the lock cylinder out, there's a video on YouTube, um, I don't have any lights in here to show you, but there's a little tab, a little tab on the lock cylinder, some Somewhere right in here, you take a screwdriver, a very small thin blade screwdriver, push in on that tab and the lock cylinder will pull out this way. That tab releases it. It's a little gray, it's a little gray tab. There's another video on the internet that, uh, or on, excuse me, on YouTube that shows you how to do that. That's how I found it. So anyway, once you get the lock cylinder out, the gear, this in the plastic gear, and it just snaps off its shaft. You pop a new gear on there, knock it onto the shaft, it just snaps on. And then uh, you, re-engage the, the rack that slides back and forth in the right uh, mechanism. I'm not going to explain how you do that. Um, I'll let you figure it out. If you've got enough at mechanical aptitude to get that far, then you can figure it out. But anyway, um, what I thought was important in this video is to show you the disassembly process of this steering rack. So obviously, the 
steering, I just put this back on just to demonstrate uh, that it works. So this has got to come off. This is these two screws right here, it comes off. The rod stays. Um, once you get that ignition switch off, which it probably wouldn't be on there anyway, once you, if you take this out of the steering column out of the car, you probably have to remove that switch already. But, so the next thing is to take this bracket off. There's a bolt here, there, two more bolts here. Take all four of those. This bracket comes off. Underneath you got this plastic sheath that, that basically keeps these wires inside here. So you pop the plastic sheath off of, um, it pops off these square, the, the mounting boss for this bracket underneath is two square like bolts or something, square head bolts. This plastic teeth is attached to those two bolts or those two uh, welded on uh, mounting bosses. Pull that off, separate the plastic sheath and wires and push it aside. So now you have these wires free and you have the steering column. So the next thing you do is there's four screws. I have to pull this steering, this is your turn signal mechanism. It's kind of stuck in there because the wires have got it pulled up in it. I don't have any good light in here, but there's four screws in there. They're five sixteenths hex head screws, four of them. And what they do is they pull this metal, this metal, uh, metal steering column up against this plastic housing. And there's a metal, kind of a half moon piece of metal in there that the steering column rests on, so it doesn't be, so it's not pulled up against the plastic directly. It sort of keeps the plastic from getting damaged by the, the steel of the steering column. It's more of just kind of a, a mounting plate. But that plate will fall out once you take these four screws out. This entire steel drive shaft pulls out of this comp, pulls out of this housing here. All right, once you get that drive this uh, column, this uh, steering column out, um, this plastic piece will be left on there. So then there's three screws that you access inside here. One uh, coming in from this direction, coming in from this direction inside here. And there's three uh, Phillips head screws in there. You take those out. Then this entire plastic piece here slides out off of that, that steel rod I showed you a while ago. I'm just going to put it back over. So the steel rod is still there. It's right here. And you have to slide this down and off of the wires and the steel rod. And then that will leave you access to the... Then you can get, finally get to the rack and the plastic gear that are right under here. Um, so... That's the only way to get to this, the mechanism. You have to completely disassemble this, this housing here to get to that part, or get to these two parts, the plastic gear and the metal rack that slides back and forth. And then once you get, it, get the new parts back in place, um, uh, you have to put it back together in the same way you took it apart. Put this housing back on with the three screws in here. And what I did was I took the housing, stood it up right like this. Let me see if I can. So the housing is standing up like this. And I dropped the that metal plate I was telling you about. I dropped it down here, dropped it down in this hole, and oriented it, oriented, oriented it. Sort of say that. Oriented the uh, piece of metal. You can kind of tell from the way it's shaped how it goes to sit down flat. And then I put, I took this this housing here and put it down over the top of this the steering shaft, the, the steel shaft of the steering column. Put it down, lined up all the holes, then put my four uh, hex head bolts back in there and um, started them. And I'm tightening them down. So that will get you back to the point that I'm at in this video. So at this stage, I've got the housing back assembled, the, uh, the steering column back inside of it. And like I said, I mounted this switch just to test out the system and it's working so far. At this stage, I gotta reassemble all the guts of the uh, turn signal wiring and the turn signal mechanism and all that, which I'm um, I'm not gonna video that uh, in detail. Um, there may be some other videos on YouTube on how to do that. If anything is uh, stands out as particularly difficult, I'll stop and video it just to point it out. But at this stage, I've repaired the steering column and uh, it, um, I'm gonna put it back in the vehicle. I'm going to reassemble all this together, including the steering wheel, put it back in the car because I need the steering wheel in, in order to turn, in order to line up, there's a bracket, um, or I don't want to call it a bracket, so it's some kind of a clamp or something, but the clamp fits back on here, it's almost like a U-joint, and that clamp has jaws that squeeze on here, and in order to get it back on here, I've got to rotate this steering shaft to get it in the right spot. But I don't think the tires will be pointed straight when I do that. I'm pretty sure I won't buy, they'd be real lucky if I got the steering wheel back on the, on this uh, 
splined in in the right place for everything to line up. So once I get this on there and I use the steering wheel to turn the wheels in the straight forward direction, I will remove the steering wheel and put it back on oriented, oriented right side up. Uh, or in this you know, level with the with the front wheels and straight ahead. So that's how I'm going to do it. And uh, if there's any other uh, major issues doing this, I'll uh, I'll video that too. But uh, so far, it's it's been a fairly uh, fairly difficult job, and I was lucky to get the parts to fix it. But again, that's Dorman eight three two two one is the repair kit. Thanks for watching.